Welcome everyone to Fanboy Frenzy, the only podcast on the internet that wishes they couldn't see John Cena. I am your host, Ryan Jarvis, and welcome to our new edition of the NXT Rundown. NXT this week, the debut today, the 18th day of December, was actually a pretty good show considering it's the follow-up to last week's TakeOver, our Evolution pay-per-view of theirs, which was phenomenal. Definitely better than the WWE pay-per-view of this past Sunday, TLC, because it actually had good wrestling from performers who are hungry, from young talent who is not boxed into a character that they've done for five plus years now, but they're actually new talents who are bringing new characterizations and who are bringing hunger, hunger wrestling back to the United States that isn't on Ring of Honor, but is actually in WWE programming. I actually enjoyed NXT this week. It was good to see more character progression from Kevin Steen slash Owen slash Fight Steen fight. Kevin Steen is actually one of my favorite performers. And any time over the past five years or so that I've had someone ask me, Ryan, who do you think would be a good fit for the WWE? Well, he was always in that list. Him, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, the old school tag team of Beer Money, which was Robert Root and James Storm. And of course, the Motor City Machine Guns. That was like the core of guys that I felt were in other promotions that if they came to WWE, and this was before NXT at the time, this was when Florida Championship Wrestling, I don't even know if they were around at that time, but uh, I always thought he would do really, really good, have that, he has that persona that reminds me of kind of a chunkier version of Randy Orton, you know, especially if you watch tonight's NXT, you can see how he's that guy that's like a snake, he's like a viper, one minute you seem to have him tamed, the next minute he strikes, And that's exactly what they're prepping Kevin Steen to be. I always thought that he and El Generico, or Sami Zayn, for those who aren't aware of of, uh, Sami Zayn's previous character, uh, El Generico was a hell of a wrestler. And he and Kevin Steen actually had a tag team, a really successful tag team, that wrestled in places like PWG and in Ring of Honor and in other places. But a few years ago, they actually had a really, really good feud in Ring of Honor that uh, that was just off the chain, violent and uh, aggressive, 100% aggression, and I really enjoyed seeing them guys perform with one another. And to know that Sami Zayn left Ring of Honor shortly after that feud and began plying his trade in the WWE as the unmasked Sami Zayn. But you know, their feud really was centered on this fact that they had this relationship that went back many years where they were a tag team, and that's what always makes those tag team splits epic matches if the guys had some time together. You know, you look back at uh, performers like Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Now granted, Marty Jannetty was not on the level when it comes to charisma that Shawn Michaels was, but he was on the level when it came to talent. And you could definitely see some of that feud in their feud, except they were much more violent matches. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Uh, NXT opened up this week with a a pretty heartfelt promo by Adrian Neville, as best as he could deliver it, because let's face it, he's no Roddy Piper. But he did come out there and he he spoke some truth about the situation with Sami Zayn and how he was kind of upset the fact that Kevin Owens, or Steen, damn it's so hard to not call him Steen, but anyway... It's it was the, Kevin Owens did what he did his very first night in NXT. Of course, you know that's going to set up a match between the two, and of course, that was the main event of the night. Kevin Owens comes out, cut a pretty dry promo, but yet, you know, what can you expect? The guy can talk, but they're not letting him kind of go that route yet. He's really supposed to be the guy that comes out, knocks heads, and goes in the back, kind of like a Goldberg, but, you know, with a flabbier body. Um, but, you know, it, the, that match was good. But we'll get into that a little bit further uh, down the road here. But the first match that really kind of stood out to me was uh, I'm a fan of Bailey. I think when it comes to women's wrestlers, I like her character. You know, because when I started watching NXT a couple months ago, two, three months ago, uh, she was feuding with Charlotte, who is the, the women's heavyweight champion in NXT. Charlotte Flair has carried that title phenomenally. 
Um, very much like I can imagine her dad carrying it, you know, when he was the former NWA heavyweight champion, you know, Ric Flair would fight anybody and Charlotte is doing the same. But in the midst of that feud with Bailey, eventually they had that respect relationship going very much like Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair had. Um, but out of all this, Charlotte Flair's, um, former partner, Sasha Banks found a new recruit so that could kind of go after the two, go after Charlotte and Bailey. Bailey's been the recipient of some butt kickings over the past, you know, five weeks, four weeks or so. And tonight was a match between uh, Bailey and Becky Lynch. Now, Becky Lynch, real bland character. I'm not really feeling it. Uh, she's kind of like an Irish Lita, just not feeling it. But you know, they had a good match. They had a competitive match, and I think Bailey actually has some more aggression now, which is what she needed. You know, because that's something that I think that Bailey's lacked uh, ever since her uh, her foray that I've seen her performing. Is she has all the in ring ability? She's got charisma. The fans love her. They're really engaged in her in her entrance, and her entrance is really fun. You know, kind of has that feeling of a. You know, like a Coco Beware, or even back in the day, the Oddities during the Attitude Era. You know, just those those performers that come out and they want you to have a good time. Uh, the difference is that she's way better performer in the ring than any of those other talents were, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, she, she, she really has plied her trade well. Becky and her had a match tonight. Of course, Becky took advantage of the knee that Bailey's had hurt for about a month. And she got the victory, you know, with a nice submission move. But, uh, you know, that that was kind of the match that was a throwaway of the night, all in all. But, you know, we've seen a lot of content in in this particular NXT show. Uh, We did see the Vaude Villains uh, go up to Commissioner uh, Regal. Almost called him Gordon. Why in hell I did that? I have no idea. He doesn't red phone his office. But, uh, you know, I the Vault Villains came in there, and I'm really a fan of their tag team. I think when it comes to NXT, the Ascension and the Vault Villains were definitely my two favorite tag teams. When the Ascension, you know, they had a match later on the night. Uh, but, you know, them and the Vault Villains, to me, are the best tag teams in NXT. I, I'm not really a fan of the Lucha Dragons, but... The Vaud Villains wanted a second shot at the Lucha Dragons uh, for the NXT World Tag Team Championships, and I think they deserve it. I think their characters are much more entertaining. I think their uh, their overall personas are much more entertaining. Their wrestling ability, to me, is more in tune with what I prefer, which is the strikes and the real wrestling. I'm not a big fan of Lucha Libre wrestling. I was back in 1996... Uh, when I first seen a guy named Rey Mysterio, but once you've seen Rey Mysterio in his prime during 96 and 97, there's nothing you're going to see, really, from the Lucha Dragons that's going to bring anything new. I've seen the best do it at his best, and I don't see anybody else really topping Rey Mysterio. And moreover, at least Rey Mysterio could give me a little bit of an interview. These guys, I can't get behind them because I can't see their faces. And quite frankly, I'm past that point of Lucha Libre wrestling. I just think it's more for kids than anything. I want to see two guys go in there and beat each other to death. I want to see submission wrestling. I want to see hold for hold hold pro wrestling. Uh, That's what really gets me there, you know. Uh, kind of like when I was a kid, I, I you know you watch something like WrestleMania three. I was seven years old when the iconic Hulk Hogan fought Andre the Giant, and that was such a huge match. You know, just two charismatic figures going at it. It was really more what we like to call a sizzle in the business. But when it comes to stakes, something that's actually you could kind of you know sink your teeth into. That night, you had a uh, Ricky Steamboat versus Macho Man Randy Savage, and of course, for me, I, going back and watching the two, when I was a kid, I'd prefer to watch Hogan and Andre because of the glitz, the glamour. Uh, but you know, nowadays, I'd rather watch Ricky Steamboat and Macho Man Randy Savage. But that's kind of the the way I interpret the Vaude Villains and the Lucha Dragons. Not that the Lucha Dragons are anywhere near the the high class and uh, the uh, the legendary status of a Hogan or an Andre by no means, but just the fact that they're a little bit more entertaining in terms of it's more glitz and glamour with them because of the flips and the spots that they do but the match they had tonight 
or, or the match that the Vaude Villains wanted tonight, they didn't get. They didn't get a chance to get the Lucha Dragons in the ring. Hopefully they save that, uh, you know, give it a few more weeks and let that bubble up a little bit more because I think those guys, those four athletes, can have really good matches, and we've seen that at TakeOver. But I don't think the match was nearly as long as it needed to be, quite frankly, at the pay-per-view last week. But, uh, you know, it was definitely good. It was definitely a good match. But the Vaude Villains are capable of a lot more, and that's kind of the way I'll end it there. But the tag team match we did see tonight was Mr. Enzo Amore who's a certified G and a bona fide stud. And quite frankly, him and Big Cass are a very entertaining tag team. Uh, I think they're needed in NXT because they kind of have that charismatic energy. I think a lot of performers in NXT suffer from what I call the, the, the WWE syndrome. And that is that they all look, a lot of them look the same. You know, they wrestle the same. They do the same moves. I mean, damn, everybody dives out of the ring. Uh, that's why I kind of lean more towards the Vaude Villains. That's why I lean more towards the Ascension, who fought Enzo and Big Cass tonight. I actually like all four of those athletes. I think all of them are entertaining in their own way. You know, I think the obviously the Ascension are the guys that get in there and just beat your butt senseless. And you got to have those kind of guys in the ring. You know, guys are legit. You know, guys that when you see them come down the entrance, you just know they can kick somebody's ass, and you don't even have to question. You know, but if you see Enzo and Big Cass, Big Cass is a big boy. You know, he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. But Enzo has something Cass doesn't have, and that's that electricity. When he talks, people listen, and he's just got a lot of charisma. So even though they're a tag team, they'll probably go out there, keep getting beat, but uh, fans will love them no matter what, so they can afford to lose matches to other talents who are moving up the chain. But you never know. When they actually give them a legitimate push, I think that you're going to see a lot more from end zone big cast, and they could definitely be their tag team champions sometime down the road. But that's kind of for a different day, a different story. But the Ascension, they went out on top again, and this kind of culminates with the fact that the past week, uh, the Ascension have had vignettes on SmackDown and Raw. So they're getting ready to get the call. They're getting ready to move up and, and move up the rung to the to SmackDown and Raw. And I'm really excited to see what they could do. Because I tell you right now, they would destroy Gold Dust and Stardust. And then that kind of leaves the Usos. But the Usos and them could have a good match. But, you know, I'm really ready for the Bruiser type tag team. You know, the Road Warriors, Demolition style tag team. And, and I think that the Ascension, even though they're a little smaller, at least, you know, Connor is, but, um, you know, I, I, I definitely, or Victor is, you know, no, Victor is, I'm sorry. But uh, I definitely like to see them continue to compete in, in, in that, those spectacular matches, and I think they'll do fantastic in that. But, you know, it really come down to the main event tonight. That's what everybody wanted to see. Everybody knew that you're going to start seeing talent, and if NXT is smart, um, there's two feuds right now that they can really expand on. And I think they're going to do it. Uh, the first with, and I'll go ahead and start with the main event match, which was Neville and, and, and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is that performer that can get under your skin, but he can back up what he does. He's a very big man, but he can dive out of the ring just like he's a littler guy. He's kind of got that Samoa Joe style uh, approach to wrestling, except he's not quite on the level of a Joe, in my opinion, but he's definitely there, um, definitely in the ballpark. And he and Ed Neville had a really good match, a really hard-fought match. I knew they weren't going to win. Uh, neither one of them were going to win with a straight pinfall because it makes no sense for Kevin Owens to come in and instantly beat the guy who'd been w their champion for months, uh, basically the number two guy in the company. You don't want to do that. You want Kevin Owens to come in and start beating everybody at the bottom of the card all the way up. That's the way you build that, that feud and give him legitimacy. Because him doing a cheap shot on Sami Zayn or Adrian Neville is not going to gain legitimacy. You need to start slow and let him build up and just destroy anyone uh, and everyone in front of him. And Adrian Neville, you're not going to let him lose his first match off of the, the you know from holding the title. So it was really a match where I knew it was going to end in a draw. I didn't end quite the way I thought it was. The way they ended it was kind of sloppy in my opinion. I would have liked to see Kevin Steen just snap, uh, maybe bust his nose open again where he kind of gets you know just in, just infuriated. And then maybe takes a chair, smacks you know Adrian Neville, or maybe power bombs him into the apron and leaves him there for a count out. You know, uh, I would have liked to seen something like that. 
But I do think the way they finished the match off tonight was good enough where it didn't hurt either athlete. It didn't hurt their uh, cre- their credentials, if you will, uh, with the fans. And I think you're going to see more of that. You're going to see more of a feud between them. But I do think that you're going to see more athletes in NXT who are friends of Sami Zayn, or at least kayfabe-wise, come out and try to stick up for Sami Zayn. And I think when Sami does come back, they might do the whole he's hurt or wear a neck brace or you know some kind of like gimmick there where you know Kevin's baiting him to come out and fight him and fight him and. You know, but there, there's a lot more that can happen there. But, you know, really the feud that I'm most excited for right now is one that I called about five weeks ago, and that was the Bull and, and uh, Baron Corbin. I think Bull Dempsey and Baron Corbin is going to be a very, very hard-hitting feud, and I can't wait to see it, man. I love to see two guys who can go out there and perform, two guys who got some charisma, and two guys who got some ring psychology and go out there and just destroy each other. Um, you know, Bull kind of has that, like I said last week, kind of got that body style of a of a Bigelow and a King Kong Bundy, you know, kind of all mixed in one. And then you got Baron Corbin, who's the taller, the better looking of the two, tatted up, ripped up, girls like him. Um, you know, he he just, they, they, go, they both have a lot of charisma, and I think. And uh, I'm really excited that NXT is taking the approach that unfortunately is more along the lines of old school wrestling. Uh, Whereas Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, they're really more in line with what you would consider sports entertainment. Let me explain for a minute, um, real brief, what I mean is the way it used to be in old school pro wrestling. And I'm talking Georgia Championship Wrestling. I'm talking strictly NWA. I'm talking even old school WWF. uh, On and on and on. AWA, you name it. Even ECW. You know, they would take a performer. They would let a good guy and a bad guy. They basically build two or three guys up at the same time. Like, for example, they did it with Sabu and Taz. Taz and Sabu basically never lost. Hardly ever lost until they feuded with their very first pay-per-view, that culmination of a feud based off their tag team from years before it, this feud carried on for like well over a year, year and a half, before finally they met up at the very first pay-per-view, Barely Legal. And uh, that was a huge, epic build-up, and that's why that match drew so much money, at least on, for ECW standards, because you had two top performers, seemed to be unbeatable, going to a match, one pinfall or a submission to a fall, and one of them has to lose. That is all the cards on the table, and that's what makes people like me want to watch. Bull Dempsey and Baron are doing the same thing. They're each winning every match. They're each going from the bottom of the card. They're going up. They're beating jobbers, and they're beating some lower-level NXT performers. But... They, they, they're they kind of building each other, and I think that's what you're going to see. You're going to see more of those two guys building each other to where they are main event talents as well. And I could see both of them doing that, and I just hope they don't get impatient. You know, I hope they don't pull Goldberg. because And, and the same thing with Kevin Steen or Kevin Owens. You know, when Goldberg went to WWE the very first time, his first match was on a backlash And I can't remember if it was 2004, I think it was. But they brought him in, man. And his first feud was The Rock. You don't go low. You don't go any higher than The Rock. And so to have him start at the top guy is ludicrous. And then his next pay-per-view, he fought Jericho. What does that mean? Well, it means there's nowhere else to go. You can't have him fighting Christian. You can't have him fighting, you know, anybody else after that. You got to start slow. If you start slow... And you let that boil and percolate and bubble and eventually it starts to spill over that. It's like boiling water. You let it just stir until it heats up and it starts to boil over. And that's when that explosion happens. That's when the conflict happens. And I do see that with Baron Corbin and Bull. And I really can't wait till those guys explode in the ring. Granted, not to take away anything anything from the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens feud. Because you're going to see that continue to explode. But I hope they don't. Let Kevin Owens look weak. I don't think they will. NXT is ran business-wise. 
The way they treat their performers is much better than the way Raw or SmackDown treats their performers. It's clear to see. But you know what? I think all in all, the show, hopefully this rundown gave you a little bit of a brief overview of the show. And hopefully you know that you need to go and check out NXT because hands down, it's the best pro wrestling on television right now. And you too can get it for only $9.95 a month on WWE Network. Getting four... NXT shows in a month's time period is well worth. You're basically paying $2.50 a show. And it's well worth it to get wrestling that generally you're not getting on Raw and you're not getting on SmackDown most of the time. So I encourage you to check it out. And for this week, ladies and gentlemen, fanboys and fangirls, that's the end of the NXT Rundown. If you'd like to see us do more wrestling rundowns, then please let us know. Drop us a line at facebook.com forward slash fanboyfrenzy or go to mixcloud.com forward slash fanboyfrenzy and make sure you go to YouTube as well. Fanboy Frenzy can be found on there. We ask you to please subscribe or like to every one of those avenues because as we grow, we need the fanboys and fangirls support to continue to grow and to know where you want the show to go moving forward. From Fanboy Frenzy headquarters, this is your host Ryan Jarvis signing off. Peace out. Fight, fight, fight. Steen, fight.